Hi guys, let's do number of connected components in an undirected graph. And this is a premium problem, so if you don't have premium, I'm sorry, but you can still follow along. Uh, okay, so we have a graph of n nodes, and we're given an integer n and an array edges, where edges at i equals a, a of i, comma b of i, which indicates that there is an edge between a of i and b of i in the graph. And they want us to return the number of components in the graph. So if we take a look at example one, we're given this graph and we would return two because as we can see here, there's two separate components in this graph. In example two, um, we would return one because as we can see, there's only one connected component in the graph. So we just return one. So, okay. Basically we need to do either a DFS or BFS on this graph. Um, starting from any node, honestly, but just counting the number of components as we go. So every time we need to start a new DFS or BFS is when we would have a new component and we would increment our variable for that. And then another thing here is, so we're given an array of edges here, which is a little bit problematic when trying to traverse through a graph because um, to find the neighbors of whatever node we're currently at, we would need to loop through the graph. I mean, loop through the, um, the array every single time. So we're going to need to create a map to store the node, like, or each node and that node's neighbors so that we can more easily look that up. So let's start by doing our map. So map integer list of integers graph is new hash map. And then this is going to initially be empty. And then we're going to want to loop through our 2D array here and basically map each neighbor to each other. So like, so let's start our, um, our loop first. So for int edge in edges. So, okay, so like we're gonna start at zero, zero, right? The coordinates or whatever. So if we don't already have this in the graph, then we're gonna need to add that as a key with an empty list. And then we're gonna add one into that empty list as its neighbor. So graph dot um, put if absent, okay. And this is gonna be edge at zero with an empty array list. Because edge at zero is like, like th this array in here is edge. And so edge at zero is the first index, which is this one. Okay, so this would return zero. Um, and we need to do the same thing for one. So we need to also add one, this this one with an empty list. So graph dot put if absent, edge at one um, with a new array list. Okay. And then now we need to actually add the values as neighbors because currently it's like when we do that it looks like that and so we need to add one here and zero here so graph dot um dot get ed edge at zero dot add edge at one okay so the edge at zero again is zero currently and so basically the graph at zero get, will give us this list. And so we want to add edge at one into this list and edge at one is one. Okay, so then one goes into here. And then we wanna do the same thing for one, but just like reverse. So graph.get edge at one dot add edge at zero. And so that's just gonna add a zero into here. And then if we double check this by looking at our diagram here, this is accurate because as we can see zero, like we're, we're saying zero has one as a neighbor. That's what this means. And we see that it does. And then we also see that one has zero as a neighbor, which is also true in this case. So anytime you have an undirected graph, like we do here, then you're going to need to do it for both nodes like we did here. Okay. So if we walk through the rest of this, then our next iteration uh, edge is going to be this array. And we already have one, so we don't need to add one again here. Um, we do not have two as a key, so we do need to add two with an empty list. Okay, so two is gonna be with an empty list. Then now we're gonna add two as a neighbor for one. So 
we're going to add two there and then we're going to do the same but the opposite here so then for two we are going to add one as a neighbor okay and then our last iteration this array is edge and we don't have a three or a four as a key so we're going to need to add both of those as empty with empty lists i mean um and add each other as neighbors so four would go in here and three would go in here and then we, we're done with the loop so at the end this is what our graph looks like for example one okay so now that we have our map set up uh, there's a few things we're going to need to keep track of here so one is the number of actual components that we find in here so we're going to say int components is zero we're going to start that off at zero and increment it every time we find a new component which is when we need to start a new dfs okay instead or like yeah when, when we start a new dfs so we're um, not on the same path anymore if that makes sense where it's like the dfs method calling itself um, and then we also need to keep track of all of the nodes that we have already visited so that we don't have an endless loop. So we're going to do that in a set. Uh, visited is new hash set. Okay. And then we need to do a loop um, and loop through each node. Okay. And for each node, we will do a DFS on it if we have not already been to that node. So for i is zero, i is less than n, because n is the number of nodes we have. Okay, remember um, i plus plus. Then we are going to say if um, we have not seen that node yet, so if visited does not contain i, then first of all, we need to increment our components, because that means that we found a new component, okay? And then also we need to do a DFS on this node. So I um, graph and visit it. Okay. And so remember, I, we're passing an I because that's the current node that we're at. So we need to explore all of its neighbors, which is going to be in these little arrays here um, and so on. And then we need to pass in graph because we need to actually be able to access the neighbors in the list. Because if we just pass an I, we only have this number. We don't actually have... The list that's associated with it so we also need the graph for that and then we need visited because that's how we're going to exit our dfs because we only exit once we end up at a node that we've already visited um yeah that we've already visited so then we don't want to revisit it and all of its neighbors and have an endless loop so we'll need to keep track of that okay and then at the very end we're just going to return the number of components we found and one more thing I need to add here, or I would like to explain, I guess, just in case it's confusing. So normally I would loop through our graphs key set, okay? But in this case, I'm just looping through n because like, um, like let's say that we have example one, basically, except that we don't have a four here, then our edges would basically, I'm just gonna show you real quick. Um, our edges would basically look like this, except we would say like n equals um, 4 then, right? Because we, we would have 4 nodes. We'd have 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is 4 nodes. And our edges would not even include that node in it though, because this is like just mapping edges, right? So if this node 3 is all by itself, then there's actually no edge attached to it. And so it wouldn't have any neighbors. So it doesn't need to go in here, if that makes sense. Um, and so then when we would create our graph, that kind of would cause an issue if we're looping through our key set, because then we would end up with a graph that looks like this. And if we're looping through the key set, then we would loop through zero and zero's neighbors, one and one's neighbors, and two and two's neighbors, and then we actually never even visit three, like node three, even though we actually do have a node three here. And so we would be missing a component. So if we loop through each node instead, like zero, one, two, and three, then we guarantee that we visit every node at least or exactly once, I guess, because we're also checking if, visit, if we've already seen it. Um, and yeah, so that just also accounts for that. So just keep that in mind, because normally I would just probably go through the key set okay now we can set up our dfs so private 
void DFS, and we're gonna pass in our node, which is an integer, and we're gonna pass in our graph, okay? So map integer list integer graph, okay? And our, our visited set. So, okay, and then we will know when to exit our DFS when we have already visited the node that we're currently at. So if visited contains our current node, just return and don't do a DFS on it. And if it does not contain that, then we will want to do a DFS. So we will add that node to visited and we will loop through its neighbors. And for each neighbor, we will do a DFS on it. So for int neighbor in graph.get or default um, node. Okay, and then also let me clarify for a second what's going on here too. So basically we have this graph, right? And we're looping through each neighbor in the graph. Let me just do that so I can actually highlight things without it freaking out. Okay, so basically for this is like our node, right? This this would be node, I'm, just as an example, this or this or whatever, right? Um, then we add that to our visited set as we go. And then for each neighbor in the, the like, let's just say it's we're at node one, just because that's like the best example here, or easiest to explain. Like we're looping through this list, right? Uh, all the nodes in this list, I mean. So, but remember, if we had a node that was like all by itself, then it wouldn't end up in the graph at all. Like when we had node three by itself over here. And so if if that's the case, then it's not even gonna be in the graph, but we do need to loop through all of the neighbors, then we're just going to, like if, it, if this node exists in here, like as a key, then we'll loop through its neighbors. Otherwise, we will just pass in an empty list. And if it's an empty list, it's not gonna have any neighbors to loop through. So we actually just don't even enter this loop at all. Um, we would just add the like node three, for example, into the visited set and not even enter this loop because there's no neighbors to loop through. So I, does that make sense? <laughs> I love how I'm asking you guys if, if you can even respond to me, but I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, and then for each neighbor, then we need to do a DFS on that neighbor. So we're gonna pass in the neighbor graph and visited, and that should be that. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so our time complexity here is O of N plus E, and N is gonna be the number of nodes in the graph, E is going to be the number of edges in the graph. Okay, and if we think about this, basically that's because, like, if we think about how this is working, right, we are iterating through every single node in uh, the graph and, and every edge. Um, so, like, logically that's where that comes from. Um, but if we look at the code, so we, here we are looping through our array of edges and looping through each <clears throat> array in the outside array of edges. So like basically we're visiting every edge once here, okay? And then in this loop, we are visiting every single, we're looping through every single node. So that also gives us N plus E. Um, and we're doing a DFS on all of the neighbors here. Okay, and then our space complexity is N plus E as well, because basically our only data structures going on here is this map and our visited set. Okay, because components is negligible, it's just a variable. So 
in our map, what exactly are we storing? Well, we're storing every single node and every single node's neighbors, which all of its neighbors are sort of like the edges here because it's representing an edge to that node, if that makes sense. Um, and then all of the visited ones are just storing O of N because that is, um, all, like we're gonna visit every single node once. So it, no matter what, it's gonna store O of N. And then in our DFS, um, we, let's, let's see. So we have the, the recursive call stack and in our call stack, um, let me think about what's worst case. So I guess our um, extreme case could be, well, okay, I guess best case actually is if every single node was disconnected because there's nothing to really explore then. Um, you're just visiting every single node and then immediately popping it off of the stack. But worst case would, I guess, be something like exam example two, where they're all connected actually, because then every single node is going to get added onto the call stack. And we don't actually pop them all off until we reach the end. So that would store, um, every node and their neighbor. So I guess that would be N plus E. So yeah, um, I, that's it for this problem, I guess. Um, please like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Bye.